Binary heaps are especially useful data structures used in a variety of contexts. But why would we want to use one? How do they work? And what problems do they solve? To answer these questions, let's start with a problem. Let's say you have some tasks to complete, and each task has a priority, some number representing the task's importance. One for your most important tasks, two for the next tier of importance, and so forth. You want to organize tasks such that you can easily access your most important task first. This way of organizing data is called a priority queue, a collection of values where at any time we always want access to the most important item. How would you store this data in a data structure? You could use an array sorted by priority. That makes it pretty quick to access high priority items, but with a fixed size array, You'll run into trouble if you ever need to add a new element into your priority queue. There's no space for another item. Another option is a linked list, with each node of data pointing to the node that follows it. This strategy makes it possible to add new data by rearranging those pointers. But it's still not so efficient to add new data. We might have to look through the entire linked list just to find the right place to add our new information. This is where binary heaps come in. Binary heaps also consist of nodes of data, but they're structured as a binary tree. That means instead of each node pointing to a single other node, nodes can have up to two so-called child nodes, a left child and a right child. A node is allowed to have no children, just a left child, or both a left and right child. Each node in a binary heap also obeys an invariant. In other words, a property that will always be true. In a binary heap, and in particular, a type of binary heap called a min heap, the value of any node must be less than or equal to the values of its child nodes. Why is that important? Well, this means the node with the smallest value must be at the top or root of this tree. So with this structure, it's easy to find the minimum value node just by looking at the root of the tree and ignoring everything else. Within this binary heap, there are two common operations we'll likely need to perform. The first is insertion, adding a new node to the heap as we might do if we have some new task to complete, for example. The second is deletion, removing whatever is at the root of the heap as we might do if we've completed the highest priority task. So let's start with insertion. When we want to add a new value to a binary heap, there are two factors we'll need to bear in mind. First, what the shape of the new heap will be, and second, preserving the heap invariant that nodes are never greater than their children. Before we think about the heap invariant, let's ignore the actual values associated with these nodes for now, and just think about the shape of our heap. Remember that each node can have a left child and a right child. Ideally, we want the left and right sides to be balanced, with an equal number of nodes on each side of each node, since if the heap is imbalanced, it might be less efficient to work with. But depending on if there are an even or odd number of nodes in the heap, it might not always be possible for the heap to be perfectly balanced. To account for that, we will allow nodes to have one extra node in the left subtree than in the right subtree. This gives us a pattern for what the shape of every different sized binary heap should look like. With one node, it's just the root. The second node we add to the left side. The third node goes to the right to keep things balanced. The fourth node needs to be the leftmost node since we add to the left first before we add to the right. The fifth node must be the child of the third node to keep things balanced again. The sixth and seventh nodes then fill in the last blanks in this level, left first and then right. The eighth node would then be the leftmost node of a new level of this tree, and so forth. Whenever we add new nodes to the heap, we need to preserve this kind of shape. But if we just take any new element and add it to the bottom of the heap in the right place, the heap invariant will often be broken, 
the parent might be greater than the new node, for example. So we'll likely need to make some adjustments to this heap to ensure that it follows the heap invariant. We'll do so by repeatedly applying a rule. Compare the node we've just added to the parent. If the parent is greater than the node, which isn't allowed in a binary heap, then we need to swap the node with its parent. Once we make that swap, we repeat the process. If the parent is greater than the node, then we swap the two. Once we've reached a point where the parent is no longer greater than the child, we can stop. The heap invariant is now satisfied. In the worst case, we might add a node that's smaller than every other node in the heap. And in that case, we would need to make swaps all the way to the top of the heap. But often, that won't be necessary. And we'll just need to make a few swaps before the node ends up in the right place. We now have the ability to add a node to the heap. The other action we'll want to perform is deleting a node from the binary heap. Because the binary heap is designed to just give us access to the minimum element, that's the only one we're allowed to delete. But once we remove the node from the heap, we're left with a heap that isn't in the correct shape anymore. In particular, it's missing a root node. So how do we fix the problem? As we did with insertion, let's first get the heap in the correct shape, and then worry about satisfying the heap invariant that elements can't be greater than their children. To get the heap into the correct shape, we can take an element from the bottom layer of the heap and move it to be the new root. Remember that we need to preserve the rules for the shape. So if there's unevenness on the bottom layer, we should remove a node such that we balance the heap. And if it's already even, we should remove from the right side first before we remove from the left. Of course, once we move the last element to the root of the heap, the heap invariant will likely not be satisfied anymore. The new root is probably going to be greater than its children. So now we need to repair the heap, similarly to how we did so with insertion. When we were inserting into the heap, we made swaps starting at the bottom and moving upwards. Now we'll make swaps starting at the top and moving downwards. If the node is less than or equal to both of its children, we're done and we don't need to make any more swaps. But otherwise, we will need to take the smallest child and make that node the new root. So we'll swap our node with the smaller child and repeat the process swapping our node with the smallest child again and again until we reach a point where we've either hit the bottom of the heap or the node is less than or equal to both children. At this point, the heap will have the correct shape and will have made all of the necessary corrections so that the heap invariant is preserved. We now have a heap that is slightly smaller with the new smallest element at the root. With this ability to add elements and remove elements from a binary heap, we have all the pieces we need to implement our priority queue. As we get new tasks, we can add them to the heap, we can quickly see the most important task, and then we can remove it once it's done.